If you have ever been to Green Park, you would have maybe noticed a piece of track that is barely used. The average commuter would not think much of it. But the thing is, there is a huge story behind that. Let me tell you. Everyone who has ever gone on the tube probably knows about the Jubilee Line. It goes from Stanmore in the west to Stratford in the east. Except, as with most tube-related things, that was not always the plan. This story begins with the Bakerloo Line. Back in the 70s, the Bakerloo had two branches diverging at Baker Street, namely the lines to Watford Junction and Stanmore. The latter is the important one for this video. Of course, this made Baker Street a big crowded station, which you can understand is not very ideal. The higher ups at London Transport decided to make a new line to decrease congestion on the Bakerloo, which would be known as the Fleet Line. However, this name was changed to the Jubilee Line for the Queen's Silver Jubilee, which was comical, as the Jubilee was not even going to open on the year of the actual Silver Jubilee. And we all know the story from there on. Or do you? Back then, there was a way different idea for the Jubilee Line. The line would be opened in phases. The first phase was between Stanmore and Charing Cross, and later, they would extend all the way to places like Surrey Keys and even Thamesmead. The reason for this different thing was simply because of how the Docklands did not have a good transport network. Keep in mind this was way before the DLR was even a thing. Skipping ahead to 1979, the Jubilee Line's first phase between Stanmore and Charing Cross was opened by none other than the Prince of Wales himself. This image shows the exact moment it was officially opened, which as you can see, was at Charing Cross. There was even a park placed at Charing Cross to commemorate this event, which sadly is not visible to the public nowadays. Unfortunately, politics and financial problems made this impossible to build. But as we all know, it did get extended, just differently. A massive development was started in Canary Wharf, and London Transport thought that it would be profitable to build a line there. The Jubilee Line was chosen to run to Canary Wharf, and with it a new proposal to extend the Jubilee to Stratford via Canary Wharf. Unfortunately, if the JNE were to be built, Charing Cross needed to be abandoned. But it was too late. The JLE got approved, and construction on the new line started. The last services to Charing Cross ran on the 19th of November 1999, with the JLE being fully open the next day. Does that mean the platforms at the station have become useless? No. Sometimes, trains terminate at Green Park and then go to the Charing Cross platforms for storage. Not only that, but Charing Cross has also been used as a film set in a few movies. So, that was that. Congratulations to you for making it past the text-to-speech. I really appreciate that. Sorry for the insanely long delay on tier film history. I lost my interest in the underground after it was announced, and I never really got back to it. In fact, I am thinking of cancelling this series because of that, but I won't for now. Also, Engines of Britain, Class 331 is delayed because of the failure of my previous episode in the series, which demotivates me. So please share this if you want so I can stay motivated to make content like this. Anyway, have a good day and I'll see you soon.